shop, where we pray, where our children go to school. And that problem is, of course, gun violence. And the voice in that new ad is gun violence survivor, former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords of Arizona. The TV spot was put out by Americans for Responsible Solutions, the new gun safety advocacy group founded by Giffords and her husband, astronaut Mark Kelly. It will run this week in D.C. as well as San Francisco, Cincinnati, Louisville, and Las Vegas, which just happen to be the cities represented by congressional leaders Nancy Pelosi, John Boehner, Mitch McConnell, and Harry Reid, respectively. Giffords isn't the only national lawmaker whose life and career were forever changed by guns. Perhaps the most visible symbol of the damage caused by firearms is Rhode Island Representative Jim Langevin. Representative Langevin became a quadriplegic at the age of 16 as a result of a gun accident at a police station where he was serving as a junior cadet. Over the last month, he's been urging his colleagues on Capitol Hill to invite victims of gun violence to be their guests at the State of the Union tomorrow. So far, about 30 Democrats are planning to do so. With over 190 shootings on an average day in America, they should have no problem finding people whose lives have been scarred by guns. Joining me tonight, it is my pleasure to welcome from Washington, D.C., Representative Jim Langevin. Uh, welcome to the War Room, Congressman. Thank you for being with us uh, ahead of this speech and ahead of your big idea. Thank you, and good evening. Thanks for having me on the program. Uh, of course. Uh, tell me, Congressman, what do you hope to achieve by bringing victims of gun violence to the State of the Union? Well, we were all touched and our hearts were broken when we heard the news of what transpired in Newtown, Connecticut. No one wants to ever see something like that happen ever again. I believe it's so important right now that we keep the focus on trying to pass meaningful gun safety legislation through the Congress. Now, we each get one guest that we can invite to the State of the Union every year. I really applaud President Obama for taking on this issue so early on in his new administration. He's, he spoke about it, alluded to it in the, his inaugural address. He's traveled around the country talking about the need for gun safety legislation to be passed. I'm confident he's going to bring it up in his State of the Union message tomorrow. And I want President Obama to know, along with the American people, that we are united in this effort to try to make sure that members of Congress hear us loud and clear that we want meaningful gun legislation passed through the Congress that is going to require universal background checks, that is going to work hard to make sure that we eliminate uh, these assault weapons and also these high-capacity magazines that could carry 30 or 100 rounds of ammunition. These are weapons of war that have no business being on our streets any more than an army tank does, and clearly they're designed only to kill large numbers of people very quickly. So unless we speak out vociferously and keep the pressure on members of the House and Senate, I'm afraid that this issue would fade away, and we're not going to allow that to happen. I'm determined to make a difference on this issue. You know, I, I, already you are making a difference, and, and we know that. I, I want to know what you both, the differences with what you hope to hear, and I think you just shared that with us, but what do you expect from the president tomorrow? His, his voice has been pretty consistent, that too of the vice president, but what do you think you're going to hear in front of the Congress and in front of America tomorrow night? I think the president is going to reach out and speak directly to the American people about why we need to stand united and, and see meaningful gun legislation, safety legislation making its way through the Congress, as I, as I stated. He's going to, I believe, remind people about the tragedies that we have faced over the last several years, these mass shootings that seem to keep taking place because weapons are getting into the wrong hands. And we need the, the time to act is now, the long, it's really long since time uh, to act, is, the time has passed. We need to act right now to make sure that we're taking tougher measures, putting those measures in place to ensure that guns aren't getting into the hands of criminals or those who would be, have some type of a mental health issue that would preclude them from owning a weapon because they'd be a danger to themselves or others. We have to act or these things are going to keep happening and we can't ever allow another uh, situation like Sandy Hook uh, to, to happen anywhere else in the country. Yeah, well, Congressman, I, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, but you know the reality of the building in which you work. You look around and you see the people uh, on the other side of that aisle. What are the chances of any of these things passing through this House of Representatives now? Well, it, it certainly won't be easy. It's going to be a challenge, but I believe if we speak and we're united and we go right to the American people that we can see this happen. And, and do you think that uh, the, the president, you know, coming to the Congress tomorrow, talking about these issues, 
Uh, it's going to be a house where, where uh, you know, one of your colleagues we mentioned at the top of the show, Steve Stockman, is going to be coming with a rock star. Uh, he's going to be coming with Ted Nugent. Um, do, you, do you see that this message is getting out in a different way than it did when, say, Gabby Giffords was shot, one of your colleagues? Well, as I said, I, I think that the, it was clear that our hearts were broken when what happened in, in Newtown, as it was when Gabby was, uh, was nearly killed and the, all those lives were lost in, in Arizona. We clearly, we have to do something to change course or these things unfortunately could very well continue to happen. And I don't want to ever see that. And this isn't a Democrat or a Republican issue. It should be a bipartisan issue. And certainly the American people overwhelmingly favor some type of uh, reform in the way our, our gun laws are written right now. At the very least, this clearly border board agreement both the American people, both gun owners and non-gun owner, gun owners, that we should have universal background checks, that anyone that's purchasing a weapon, that there should be a thorough background check so that we know that these weapons aren't going to find their way into the wrong hands. It's, it's really that simple. We can make a difference on this if we stand united, if we, we're firm in our resolve to make sure that we see meaningful reform actually happen. And again, I give the President uh, high marks on this issue. Uh, it, I, I applaud Mayor Michael Bloomberg for putting his personal prestige and name out there as well as his resources. Uh, the mayors uh, against uh, illegal guns are speaking out, the Brady campaign and the American people and including the, the victims of gun violence or who have lost people to gun violence who are, we've invited to join us at the State of the Union message. We're all joining together and speaking with one loud voice that we want to see gun safety legislation enacted. Yeah, and I can see your passion. Congressman, tell me who's going to be sitting next to you at the State of the Union tomorrow. Uh, my guest is Jim Tyrell. Uh, he is from Warwick, Rhode Island, my hometown. Uh, he unfortunately, very sadly, lost his sister nine years ago when uh, her sister uh, was, was killed in the place where she, uh, business that she owned. She was behind the counter. Uh, the family was out celebrating a, uh, a, uh, a family uh, anniversary that evening and they were expecting her to her to arrive and she never did. Uh, she was tragically killed that night. For the last nine years, Jim Tyrell has tried to uh, honor his sister's memory, keep her memory alive, and he's been very active in, uh, in promoting uh, efforts to eliminate gun violence. He's worked with what's called the, uh, the Institute for the Study and Practice of Nonviolence, which is an organization that tries to intervene and defuse violent situations and gang-related issues. Uh, and also yep. work with local law enforcement. So he's, a, he's an incredible guy, and, and I'm proud to have him here as my guest. Well, Congressman, uh, you know, I, for one, applaud what you're doing. I think it's impactful when you see victims of gun violence, uh, as yourself, uh, you know, up there talking about it and showing America the problems that we have in this country with guns. Congressman Jim